In physics, we want to take some situation like this, where I'm tossing a ball around, and we want to describe it, we want to understand what's going on. Lots of questions you could ask, lots of words that you could use to explain and describe the situation. We want to begin at the beginning now. So let's not ask why the ball follows the path that it does. Let's first just try to describe the path. It's already a complicated enough job. That's the topic of the first portion of this course. First portion of this course is titled Kinematics. Kinematics is the description of motion, not the explanation. That comes later. Kinematics comes from a Greek word kinema, which means motion. And, you know, even in this case, the motion of this ball, it's kind of going to be difficult to explain. It's moving through space. It's got a velocity as a function of time, position. I'd like to keep everything as simple as possible. In physics, you always try to simplify everything as much as you can until you've gotten down to the basic ideas. So let's restrict ourselves for now to the simplest possible kind of motion that I can imagine, which is motion in one dimension. One dimension means, for instance, that I can only go forwards and backwards, but that's it. Can't go sideways, can't go up and down. Think about a train on a railroad track or a car that's sort of stuck on a narrow straight highway. One dimensional motion doesn't have to be forward and backward. Here's one dimensional motion. Take a ball and I drop it. It's traveling only in this line. If I throw it up and down and I'm mildly coordinated, I can make it go up and down. That's also one dimensional motion. So how are we going to describe this motion? We're going to need some physically measurable parameters, some numbers, which describe where is it as a function of time. Time is the first piece of the story. Time we will usually denote in our equations just with the symbol t. And when I use the symbol t, I'm referring to an instant in time. An instant means now doesn't mean an interval from now till now. So you can measure time with various devices. You can click on a stopwatch. That's kind of convenient because you've set t equals to 0 to be some convenient moment. Or you can just use your wristwatch and say, now is 7.35. It's an instant in time that we usually want to refer to when we're describing motion. And we'd like to talk about the position. This is the most elementary piece of kinematics is talking about position x as a function of time. So I take an object, this little iguanodon in a railroad car, and I put it down, and I would like to describe its position. How am I going to do that? I want to be quantitative. Right? This is physics. It's important that we not just describe things qualitatively. So I say, OK, it's at a position of 2 centimeters. Well, what? What am I talking about? Is it two centimeters from the center of this table? Is it two centimeters from the edge? I need a reference frame. I need a coordinate system. So whenever you're solving kinematics problems, you're pretty much obligated to define a coordinate system. And it's really a definition. You can put your coordinate system here. You can slide it off to the side, just wherever you want to call 0. Would you like 0 to be over here? So if I center this thing and the iguanodon is located at position 0, now I have a nice, easy, quantitative way of describing position. And if I start running the stopwatch, I can talk about position as a function of time. By the way, this is a very complicated little object. And keep it simple. Always, in the, especially in the beginning of any physics exercise, you want to just simplify the problem to its basic elements. I'm going to treat this as a point iguanodon. Uh, just located right in the middle, or maybe I'll just look at the leading edge. And that's the motion that we're going to be describing. So what are ways to describe motion? Well, I could just go to give you a list, x at 1 second, x at 2 seconds. I could give you a formula. We're going to be using all sorts of ways of describing motion. But maybe one of the simplest is here's this object traveling along. And uh, I'm just going to draw a graph. So let's just count out loud. We start the clock. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, just cruising along, nice steady motion. And I would like to present a graph of x versus t. You notice on my coordinate system that I defined positive x to be off in the direction of the arrow. That's the convention. And 
it's pretty normal to define positive x to be to the right. So in this coordinate system, I started at time t equals to 0, at x equals to 0. At time t equals to 1 second, I was at x equals 1. t equals to 2 seconds, I was at x equals to 2, and so on. It's a nice straight graph. Notice, and you're going to think a little bit about this graph. The motion was sideways. The graph is tipped. So just think about how you have to interpret this graph. Uh, it really is the most elementary way that I can think of of describing this kind of motion.